Nice way to start a video. We have, um, well, I'm just warming up the engine a bit to push some of that coolant round after I change the radiator and put the fan on the correct way round. And then I'm going to do an oil change because the oil's never been changed on this car since I've had it. There didn't seem a lot of point. Um, running full choke at the moment so it's a little, little bit cold still. The other thing I want to do while I'm doing the oil change is change the sender. We've also got quite a lot of instruments not working. These three I think are all, or four, I think they're all fed on um, the same power system, like the same fuse. So it's possible that they're not working because of one fuse out so before I swap that I want to fault find and make sure that these are um, getting power so I'm gonna go dig out my wiring diagrams and work out which fuse does what and then just see if I can coax them back to life before I bother changing the sender on the engine itself just switched back to the GoPro camera because um, my iPhone is full this is the main fuse box for a lot of the stuff on this car and you can see that one there is blown all of these are really corroded so um, I wouldn't mind betting that's part of the problem I haven't yet worked out which one does what there is a helpful guide on here location of fuses as viewed basic dotty being basic what's strange is that number two should not be occupied but if you turn this around that way as viewed that it is occupied and the one that isn't is the bottom left which would suggest this goes like that so I'm thoroughly confused um, hence why I'm ignoring that and I've got my book and hopefully in here somewhere it'll have fuses and wiring but it might take me a while to work it out I'm being a dumbass when it says as viewed, I think they mean you hold it like that. So that makes sense. And basically the one that's blown, obviously, is battery controlled 25 amp. The ones that are really corroded are hazards, ignition control. Um, yeah, I haven't actually got any of the headlights or anything plugged in, all the hazards or, you know, none of the wiring in the front is done, none of the back wiring is done. Uh, I'm kind of jumping the gun doing the wiring, but I just want to get these working before I do the oil change Then I know whether or not I need to change the sender as I might have just explained a moment ago, and I'm probably boring you but That's the dangers of not having a well edited video channel. Never mind Just looking at the wiring diagram for a 2300 which is what this car was originally all of the instruments water temperature indicator battery conditioning indicator, uh, fuel indicators, 82, 84, 86, 82 is there, 84 is there, 86, all of them are fed by that fuse there, which is fed by white, which comes from um, the inhibits or the pressure switch on the engine. Um, annoyingly here, 75 just says fuse box, so it's that one I'm looking up there. So I just need to find the two white wires coming in and see if they're getting 12 volts. The other systems that are on them, I haven't plugged in yet. They're all lights and things. So I'm going to go find a multimeter. If I've got one that has any batteries, find the pin that has white, which is by the looks of things, uh, those two there and just check I'm getting power when the ignition's on. I've just done a meter check and I'm getting 12 volts at those two there. I've just pulled the wiring plug from the back of the instrument cluster. Although I'm finding dodgy wires like that everywhere. Um, and the green, which I think is the power in, isn't in its socket, it's pulled out. So uh, I'm gonna check, I've got power there. One moment.
is all very constricted. There ain't a lot of room in here with the windscreen in. So that's saying 12 volts at that green pin. But still no play down here. I don't know. Is it me or is that coming up now? A bit more choke, I think. Come on. Excellent. I think the belt's screaming now because the alternator's actually under load. Right, so that's all that was. Battery's coming up, fuel's coming up, oil pressure's still off, coolant still off. Obviously need to adjust that fan belt a bit still. But we're winning. Right, next thing to do is to pull the wire off, earth that, and see if it goes up. On this engine, because it's a series one, got oil, um, well, one kind of switch here, which basically, if there's no oil pressure, it turns the fuel pump off and some of the ignition services as well. That one under there, which you can probably can't see because my camera works a bit dodgy, that is the actual sender and that is the wire to it. And theoretically, if that gets earthed, it should send the gauge to full on. So I'm gonna find a piece of wire to connect that to an earth somewhere. And then we'll turn the ignition. If that gauge goes up, we know the gauge is okay. If it doesn't, um, then the gauge is faulty. If it does, then it's that unit that's faulty. And I can swap that while I do the oil change without getting oil everywhere. That's my plan anyway. <sighs> Making up the wire just so I can Bosh it on things. Uh, what do I need? I need a male end, don't I? Have I got any males? Yes. Ah, oh. crap. There's some. Good, right. We are away. Just done a quick earth test. The ignition on and the dial doesn't move. So it might not be the unit on the engine. It might actually be the unit. So now I'm gonna do a continuity check between the wire down there and the wire going to the back of the unit up here, the signal wire, if I can get to it, because it'll be down there somewhere. Should be red and green and it should be on that plug, but I might have to go fishing for it. <sighs> right, so I've got that plugged into the red green at the back of the unit. And then this is my wire to the wire in the engine bay. Oh, come here. And I've got continuity. So the problem would appear to be that pressure gauge itself or the terminals to it. So I'm going to pull that out straight away. You can see somebody's been in here before. It's all loose, nothing screwed in right. The glasses are a bit wonky donkey. God knows what that was. Blue tack. 1980s blue tack right i'm going to pull all that apart and see if i can make it work back of the unit pulled open i don't know whether i've just done this but it appears that there's an earth not in there and i think that's some kind of delay but i don't know that it's for the oil pressure either way that should probably be connected there's very little slack on any of these um the other thing is there's this red wire floating around which appears to come out of the loom there. This is some sort of bodgery gone on. 
somebody's actually managed to solder these cables into there no idea why no idea what they do but i'm a bit scared by them so i'm going to tape them up so they can't short on anything in case they're powered there's lots of bodging in here and i think it's all the result of this having been a 2.3 liter and converted to 2. Point, oh sorry 3.5 so um hopefully we can muddle through all of this i'm noticing that there is a lot of corrosion on the back of here so it might be this whole unit is a bit suspect so i'm going to pull the whole thing out clean it all up um clean all the ribbons and the strips and then put it back together again easy way to check rob a known working good unit out of another car so i've just pulled that out of my vas because i know all of this works i'm going to shove it in this car see what happens okay so basically fuel voltage water temperature actually moved as well but oil pressure is still not working and i know i've got continuity so i think not only is this whole lump bad but the oil pressure sender is also bad if i turn the ignition off watch the coolant temp and it should drop a bit yeah it does so it's obviously the coolant temp sender is working which is excellent but the oil pressure sender isn't so i think i'm going to swap it anyway I've got a spare i don't know whether the spare even works but i'll leave this in here just to double check so on with the oil change the engine is sufficiently warm now uh, for me to drain it out that oil i'm using <coughs> is quite expensive this is a highly refined mineral oil rather than semi-synthetic or fully synthetic the benefit of this oil is it has it doesn't actually say it on here but um According to the Great Wide Web, World Wide Web, Internet, um, it has a lot of ZDDP in it, which is some kind of solid lubricant or something zinc additive that's good for older engines that a lot of modern oils don't seem to have a lot of. So it's been recommended for Rover V8s and you can get it in lots of different grades. I'm using 20W50 because um i think on later rover v8s like the ones that are in the range rovers they've got a quite a different oil pump design so this thing is like an early crude impeller type weird pump thing and um it's i think low pressure high volume so i don't know why but basically thicker oil is meant to be better in some respects it's this stuff's also recommended by rpi who are like um, quite well known for building V8 engines so if it's good enough for them it's good enough for me so I'm gonna go get some axle stands a bucket drain the oil and I might have a look at that fan belt which is I don't know I hate these bit I mean it's quite old so maybe it's just re running in really needs a new one just drained the oil and it's not very nice it's consistent with it having well basically not been it's weird it's not got any met metallic particles in it but it's not normal color it's almost like it's got water in it like you would see with a head gasket failure which is very worrying i'm hoping it's just because this car sat for so long and um it's just from condensation or like some weird effect like that but it's not normal oil uh that is worrying me and then i took the oil filler cap off and there was some mayonnaise shite not not i mean i've cleaned it but we are talking tiny amounts just like like if you've had a car that's done lots of starts and stops and hasn't ever got hot it was like that kind of film of it so i'm not too worried about that when you look inside and you look at the rockers and everything else they were always perfect so hopefully this is nothing to worry about but i would say it's concerned me slightly that oil if this was a major head gasket problem i think it would be doing a lot more than that but it's something to keep an eye on just to pull the oil filter and i'm going to tip it out so you can see what i mean basically it's warm obviously so it's going to be less viscous but that does not look like normal oil that comes out of an old engine i'm a little concerned now 
I'm starting to wonder whether I shouldn't fill it with some generic cheap oil and um, another oil filter and just run it and make sure we haven't got head, head gasket failure before I bother pouring decent oil in it. Decision made, I'm going to go down the shops and buy some cheap oil to shove in it before I bother pouring nearly 40 quid's worth of decent oil into it because we need to monitor this carefully. If it was actually a head gasket failure I think it would be showing more symptoms um, but I don't know hopefully it's just condensation and it's because this is the first real time or periods of time when it's been to the body shop and back where it's actually been running for extended periods and any coolant could have um, sorry not coolant but water that's just in the atmosphere could have actually started to circulate with the oil and then get entrained and emulsified with it so fingers crossed it's not a head gasket because that would be a pain in the bum sacrificial oil purchased this is £16.99's worth of 2050 motor oil recommended for older high mileage vehicles that's just going to go in as a stopgap. Uh, new filter over there. Um, I'm going to swap that pressure transmitter first. If I can remember what I've done with it. Oh, oh there it is. It looks scruffy. But the post on it doesn't rotate. So that's a start. I'll have to clean it up with a bit of brake cleaner. Bosh it in and see what it does. There's the old one, and I've just cracked it off. Um, so access isn't the best, but at least I can kind of get to it. The reason I was mentioning the top of the terminal being more rigidly attached than on, well, just that it was, is the one that's in the car that I'm wrestling with now. Is wobbly as fuck oh sorry i keep swearing but basically that i wouldn't mind betting is broken inside somehow so we shall fit this one clean that brass or copper washer up and then clean this off insert it and then put the wall back in sender fitted top up oil filter it's amazing how much these things suck up if you actually watch okay so that's brimful now let's leave it and then we'll see how much it sucks up so I've literally left that for a couple of minutes while I've had a cup of tea it's sucked it all right down to the bottom so those paper elements really do need fair bit of soaking that's why the oil level appear, apparently drops after you've run it up off it goes again engine oil is in Ugh. let's start it up and see what happens oil pressure working Cool. Right, so I know all of the sender's engine side work. Just that gauge on that other cluster doesn't appear to. Good. Right, now we just have to hope we haven't got a uh, head gasket problem. Yippee! Just had it running again. And I've literally, just before I picked the camera up, I took that off. If this had actually got a head gasket failure and there was coolant in the engine then for the amount of time I've run it for the temperature it's got to I'd expect to see lots of vapor coming out of there and there was absolutely nothing so that's a good sign there isn't anything out the exhaust that isn't just normal condensation for a cold day um, so it'll be a watch and wait type of job and see what it does um, I kind of oh yeah what else did I do found the screw that was missing from the dipstick holder found an ugly but original screw for that so the bonnet opens and closes properly now I think 
this afternoon I'm gonna just concentrate on buttoning down the wiring for the headlights in the engine bay um, and also in and around the boot area for the boot lights and all the rear lights it had a tow bar there's some really nasty wiring gone on in here um, lots of scotch locks and a reverse relay and all that sort of clobber so fun and games the body shops also got a bit of overspray on some of the bulbs so um, I'll just double check all of that and the earths um, oh I can also fit and check the signals um, I think I did mention it in a previous video but basically these SD ones they're quite good at snapping this piece of plastic here that's the clamp that holds it to the steering column so what I've done on this one is cut a piece of steel put self tapper screw through there wrapped all the way around so that when you do it up it actually acts like a clamp now and not just floppy because it really bugs me when you hit the indicators and the whole thing is shifting around on the column like that and then your um, self correct indicators don't work properly either so hopefully that's all done that can go in and I can check all the wiring for the switch gear just um, <coughs> fitting the switch gear and reminding myself of how the wires run because this has got the adjustable column so the controls the steering wheel can move in and out or up and down so it's quite an unusual car in that regard so you can basically get really comfy but basically the way this has been set up somebody's run the wiring through that little hole there but of course it can get trapped so I need to unplug that one and reroute it and the manual suggests that they do in fact just get cable tied along the outside here so that they can't get mashed up in that mechanism I can't really remember where I got to but I was fitting the stalks I think I'm in the back now trying to work out what the hell has gone on here lots of bodgery for tow bar electrics which is that flash master it's missing the bulb failure unit uh, that would have been the courtesy light in the middle here <coughs> then we've got our offside rear lights running through to these two but I can't remember what they do if anything <clears throat> that might be another switch in here what's confusing me slightly is we have this box I think perhaps some of that has been put in because it had the series 2 tailgate with a rear wash wipe uh, we don't have that anymore so I think maybe that is largely redundant and that explains that bit that I have no idea what it is or what it goes to it looks like the same sort of ribbon thing as you get for the bulb warning light thing but it isn't can't be so I've got some tracing to do and some head scratching to do what I really want to do is now I've got the headlight switch in power this loom up and then that will help me work out bits of it but yeah I think first off I'm going to remove the tow bar electrics and the scotch locks and tidy it up a bit tow bar electrics removed scotch locks removed and I've just taped up where the scotch locks have come out now I'm going through the wiring just checking everything um, cleaning up the bulb holders checking all the bulbs some of them have been painted interesting colors so I'm going to try and clean that off with thinners and I'm also checking them with a battery my power probe and then I've got an assortment of bulbs and spare holders and things here but before I bother trying to power these from the car I'm just going to make sure that all the loom and everything works and each individual bulb like so so it's kind of boring kind of time consuming but 
it's easier to do it this way than it is to switch the lights on so it doesn't work and then start pulling things apart how cute is that oh sorry how cute is that we have a working boot light uh, I will turn that off for a moment so all that side's done new bulbs where I needed them one I had to put a new earth on because that had split haven't checked anything other than with the power probe I'm going to do this side now there's a couple of rusty looking plugs which I'll clean up and I'm missing all the bulb holders which is quite annoying but that's the way it goes just started fiddling around with the wiring uh, with the ignition on and the headlight switch on I should have tail lights but I don't and there's a relay somewhere over the other side of the car which might be a bit duff so I'll have to go and dig that out and see what's going on I was being a dumbass I hadn't fitted the bulb warning oh, cock failure unit and this loom actually gets powered so by that so um, now that's plugged in I've got tail lights let's see what else we might have I don't think the indicators will work because um, I think the relay down here is looking decidedly suspect one's the flasher relay uh, well in fact those are both flasher relays I don't know why there's two. Oh yeah one's hazards and the other one must be indicators I would guess but they are very rusty so I doubt they're gonna work can't feel any clicking going on um, I haven't plugged in any lights at the front yet instrument warning lights are on or at least that one is there uh, brake nothing on the brake light I'll have to get under in and check we've actually got power going to those in my view that we don't yet anyway I'll keep poking I found I was getting 12 volts at the switch but when it was on I wasn't getting anything basically the switch is either badly adjusted or it doesn't work so I've put a bridging wire in there and lo and behold I get one brake light so now I need to work out why the other one doesn't work whether it's an earth whether it's just my bulb holder which one is it that one I think no that one anyway more fanning about we now have a pair of brake lights admittedly it's only when that link wire is in I'm gonna now play with the switch just been playing with the switch doing a continuity test and basically it's not a happy bunny yeah so that's dead so I need to go and find another one I'm not sure if I've got one or I might try and take that apart and see if I can clean its insides out it's probably just dirt and corrosion well there was me optimistically looking to fix the brake light switch just prized it apart and that is what's in there the spring is completely rusted to nothing uh, so they're probably not very expensive so I shall just try and get another one I'm about to pack up for the day because I've been out here most of it and it's real cold even if it's not raining or snowing these are the two indicator relays they're so knackered that um, I'm just gonna try and buy new ones for the moment I can borrow some from another car this is the hazard warning switch and I think I could be wrong but on a series two actually no it is the same on this um, all the indicators go in and out of this and in my experience these cars once they've sat the little pins and terminals in here corrode up so you can think it's all to do with the stalk or the relays and it's not it's to do with the power going through this switch so I'm going to open it up and see what the lights are inside I'm expecting lots of old grease and corrosion you can start to see the mess at least the spring hasn't dissolved like it did on the brake light switch these are quite these are easier to take apart on a series one than they are on a series two series two they almost always break series one the way the case is held together 
it's a little bit more robust but in there we can pull that forward it's so stiff this one Ugh. To pull that little carriage thing out. This bit can sometimes fire apart because there's a little spring or several springs under here. Right, those springs look alright, they've not corroded or collapsed. That little contactor looks really furred up, so we'll clean that up. And then also clean up all those pins there and re-lubricate it and check that little backlighting bulb just got a can of whoops contact cleaner some sandpaper just check the bulb it doesn't appear to be working or oh, that's testing through the wires but i'll pull the bulb out and check it direct annoyingly the bulb is knackered and i can't find one so i'm going to put it back together again for the moment without the backlighting that's all it is, backlighting, it won't stop it from working. Oh, that was clever, wasn't it? I just tipped the bloody spring out. Bollocks.